Everyone was surprised and didn't expect a Mythic Blueprint to make a comeback this season. Sadly, the returning Mythic this time is the Peacekeeper MK2 artifact. It will be on the store from 16th of January to 14th of February, Valentine's Day. I can't believe they made Peacekeeper come back like this. But also I think they did it because we have Mythic Siren in the store and they probably want people to go for Mythic Siren instead of buying any other Mythic. And this reminds me of something that Call of Duty Mobile made a statement a few months ago. When Call of Duty Mobile developers were questioned about why some mythics look inferior to others and why don't they have special features like a custom iron sight. Yes, I'm talking about mythics like the Peacekeeper MK2 artifact and ASL Double H. Call of Duty Mobile responded this in a way that suggests that in future we might see an improved versions of the existing mythics in Call of Duty Mobile. That means a reworked mythics. The K44 color spectrum first came out like this, which obviously we thought it's great but after a few months they reworked it and released it as a redux which came out like this so there is not a slight difference but a huge difference between the two versions of kn44 at the same time those who bought the kn44 earlier got their blueprint upgraded to the newer version so basically what they are trying to do with the mythics is the same thing the mythics like peacekeeper mk2 artifact and asol double edge will surely get some improvements like better iron sights and more counters and maybe some improved kill effects too. Now we are just few days away from getting the mythic back and I don't think they have done any changes to the peacekeeper at all. I think they simply put peacekeeper right back in the game just to make sure people don't chase it and chase mythic siren instead. What do you guys think about the mythic peacekeeper coming back? Let me know in the comment section. It's quite funny because in the for you section also they have added another legendary peacekeeper and now the mythic peacekeeper is coming back. I truly have no idea what they are thinking. If you talk about the lucky draws, the first draw, the moonlight hole draw is expected to be released on 13th of January and it will be there until 26th of January. I hope it will be released much sooner but this is the schedule. The brand new map Atrium will be released on 19th of January. Let's talk about this map a little bit. This map is a classic from Call of Duty Modern Warfare made just for the intense gunfight mode. The Atrium's got a new look, ditching the dark stuff for a more welcoming vibe. If you are wondering, yes this is a part of the Anya Palace. But as I told you before, it's out of the dark theme, it's more welcoming this time. We can expect epic gun fights on this small map. Inside of this map you will find pillars around a fountain. It's a perfect place for hiding during battles. There are light streams from a damaged palace dome, a 17th century styled windows and a very unique atmosphere. And yeah, there are some fancy chandeliers in some corners too. You will notice a fountain and a tree under the palace dome. They are handy for hiding and blocking the enemy's view. The map is all about quick, exciting gameplay, no matter what weapons you prefer. Even though it is small, the map totally fits the vibe of new season. Let's also talk about the balance changes. The Maddox is getting a buff. Specifically, it's getting a range improvement because it currently lacks attachments that can really amp up its range. This upgrade aims to make it more competitive and versatile in gunfights. They have made Eco Fire even better by increasing the movement speed while aiming downside. The FFAR1 is getting a tweak. It's more like an adjustment. The chest multiplier is going up, but the initial range is reduced. This adjustment aims to balance things out, making it more effective in close combat by dialing it back its range a little bit. Here's a great news for the Man of War fans. In next update, they will get increased magazine capacity, especially noticeable when you are using an extended mag. Now you can pack more firepower without worrying about reloading as often. It's a game changer for sure. For the Brewer named K9 users, using the 60 round mag will give you a slight boost in movement speed, allowing for a bit more agility in your gameplay. Despite its Black Ops series attachments, the Dingo's mobility was a bit off. To make it more realistic, they are giving it a boost. Expect an increase in movement speed and faster running speed, and it will make Dingo feel more agile. HDR users, long awaited buff is coming to you. To match with the combat pace with other sniper rifles, despite HDR damage, it's been a bit sluggish in terms of mobility. That's changing now. Its basic movement speed is getting a boost because now you have not only the hefty firepower, you also have high mobility. Shotgun users, the Echo is getting a buff. Now only for the multiplayer, the vertical recoil is reduced. It will bring you better control and accuracy. Not just that, they have optimized the tactical and empty reloading times to keep it up with the competition. UL736 will also get a brand new attachment called the Integrated Silencer Barrel. When you keep this, it will hurt your accuracy and control a little bit. But on the flip side, you will move a lot faster and shoot quieter. It's all about staying sneaky with this attachment. When it comes to equipments, operator skills and score streaks, the 
cryobomb is buffed, now it will have large effective area and strong slowing effects. Meanwhile, chopper gunner is becoming more challenging to earn as its required score is being increased, meaning you will have to rack up more points to unleash its firepower. And for the claw, the duration is getting trimmed down. The wheels are now shoots more often because they have increased the fire interval. The tempers got a buff, they have increased the effective damage range and bullet speed. But now it takes a little bit longer to recharge. For the unit support perk, there have been an upgrade. They have increased the charging ratio of shared teammate unit support, also reduced the self-reduction charge ratio. For the dauntless perk, they have made a change. They have decreased the buff on damage taken from burning. The final perk they have touched is sharpener. Sharpener is buffed. The delayed causes to the enemy's health regeneration after explosive damage has been increased. 